Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Jamie. I always wanted to do it that way. That's how Johnny Cash used to introduce himself. You know, he'd say, Hello, my name is Johnny Cash. And for those of you who are too young to know who Johnny Cash is, Google it, okay? Um, uh, welcome, everybody, and welcome uh, to this time with me, Tuesdays with Pastor Jamie, where we look at some scripture uh, and do it all in under a half an hour. Um, as you can tell by how it's still snowing in even inside my house, uh, it's cold outside. It was 20-some below when I woke up, and it's a bajillion below in, uh, uh, in, uh, with wind chill. So anyway, it's really cold here. So um, today we're going to um, talk about a subject that is uh, center core for a, a lot of us believers, and it's that God loves sinners. And uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, before that, uh, today is Fat Tuesday. If uh, you're in New Orleans, uh, you can't celebrate it out in the street. But I noticed they're decorating their houses like floats. Um, and the idea behind Fat Tuesday is this. Tomorrow is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. And Lent is a very contemplative spiritual time. For 40 days uh, that we sometimes give up things uh, but the whole purpose is to be closer to God well Fat Tuesday the idea is get in get in as much debauchery as you possibly can before Lent starts so because um, God loves sinners right um, so today we're going to look at first Peter uh, it's a different way of hearing about the grace of God and loving sinners um, as opposed to all the stuff that the Apostle Paul says in most of the New Testament and all the things that Jesus says. Um, it's all the same, just has a little different angle. So we're going to look at 1 Peter and ponder why and how uh, God loves sinners, which is me. And if you're human, it's you too. So let's uh, begin with a word of prayer and then we'll read 1 Peter. Okay, let us pray. Gracious Lord God, uh, we are humbled to be in your presence. We uh, give to you all uh, the honor and praise today. We uh, come to you with some anxiety. We give that, cast that upon you today. We ask, Lord, that you would help us with our faith as our world is undergoing all kinds of suffering. You have called us to proclaim your good news that all sinners are forgiven, accepted, and loved. So today we pray that as we read your scripture, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo, what was that? So uh, we're going to read from this. Oh, it's almost worn off. That's a good thing, though. Uh, from 1 Peter. So... Again, for finding stuff in your Bible, uh, 1 Peter is in the New Testament, way in the back. So if you go to the book of Revelation, which is the last book, and uh, ponder a little forward, you'll see 1 John, and then you'll see, um, you'll get to 1 Peter, okay? Um, and this is 1 Peter, and it might be good that you follow along, because I'm going to go right along with the verses, and they're kind of tough. <laughs> Um, but it's 1 Peter 3, 18 through 25, and I'll read it slowly, and it goes like this, beginning at the 18th verse. For Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, whom in former days did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here's our reading for today. Well, that's kind of interesting one, huh? Um, uh, before we ponder too many of the verses, I'll give you a little context of uh, how this is written. Um, this is written to Gentiles. So anybody that's not Jewish, which Jesus was a Jew. You want me to say it again? And uh, so these are people that are strangers, outsiders, were not in the faith like Jesus and his disciples were. And so it's a letter to them. Now, these people ha are running from the law. Um, they're, on the outs they're in Asia. They're on the outskirts of the Roman Empire. Because the Roman Empire now, at the end of the century, when this is being written, are rounding up uh, uh, Christians uh, like they did the Jews in the Holocaust and, and you know, doing terrible things to them. So this letter goes to these people who are kind of, again, on the margins. Um, they've been kicked off out of their homes, out of their, fa uh, out of their land, and, and they're on the margins of the uh, Holy Roman Empire. And at any time, um, they could suffer and die. So this letter goes out to them uh, by, we're assuming, a, um, uh, another group of Christians naming the book after Peter because it would be about a century later he'd be dead. And so um, they're refugees uh, living a harsh life out on the margin. So we'll call this author Peter. <laughs> uh, and he's writing to encourage them that faith is worth it. You know, don't, don't give up. Um, don't cave in to the Romans. And, you know, uh, stand, um, stand tall. In the midst of um, his writing, he, um, he gives us, uh, this explanation um, of the saving grace of God, which, like I said, is, is written all over the New Testament. But, um, but we start in verse 18. And again, if you don't have your Bible, it goes like this. For Christ also suffered. Some translations say, for Christ also died. But for Christ also suffered or died for sins once, for, once and for all. Um, the righteous for the unrighteous in order to bring you the good news of God. So, um, so Christ suffered um, once and for all. Well, what does that mean, once and for all? Well, it means Christ died, Christ suffered once and for all. <laughs> um, he died, it's done, okay? So when you pray a or go to church and do your confession, Lord, forgive me for all these things. Um, God has already done that, period. So you're not, when you go to confession, or when you, you make those prayers, you're not bargaining with God. God, I, I will apologize and then forgive me. You know, I'll do this and, it, and it's already been done, okay? So the, again, this is a, a, a point that's made throughout the New Testament that in the Christ event, um, Christ died, Christ suffered for humanity, for all of us, both present and to come. And I'm assuming back in Noah's day too. Um, so uh, maybe when we do our confession, um, we're calling upon God to, to help us um, realize that we're not the end all be all um, and that we have been forgiven. Okay. Um, just remember, it's God does all these things. Whenever you start taking credit for stuff, you run on a, a fine line. And I know as Christians, we've point, pointed the fingers at lots of people saying, you know, you're bad, you're bad. But hey, um, God forgives sinners. So according to um, our author here, we're calling Peter, um, this uh, salvific, this saving grace has already been done. It was done 2,000 and some years ago. And um, it was done for the righteous and the unrighteous, for the winners and the losers, for the clean and the unclean, for the Jews and the Gentiles. Put in whatever definition you want to put in there. But for all of humanity, um, not just the ones that may do good, moral, clean things, which is an astounding thing. 
Because with all the different gods and religions that were going on at the time, and all the gods and religions that are going on now, and all the gods and religions that were going on before Jesus, um, there was this the sense of you have to give something to God in order for God to give you something back. Okay, And depending on how precious and valuable that thing is that you give up, then proportionally you'll get back that back from God. So the Aztecs, a little bit of the Mayans, they would sacrifice their children because their children were the most valuable thing to them. And then they expected God to give them life. Hmm? Um, and you can go on and on. In the Jewish day, they would have pigeons, they would have goats, they'd have cattle, they'd have grain. They would sacrifice all these things to God right around harvest time and expect then, because they sacrificed, that God would give back to them. That was the old way of thinking. And people still think that today, right? <clears throat> you get in a tough bind and you say, okay, Lord, um, I promise that I will not drink any more beer as long as I live if you get me out of this situation, right? So there's still that sacrificial type of understanding. But what Peter is saying and what Paul and, and all the New Testament says here, there, and everywhere is how that system is done. Um, in Jesus, in one event, you are forgiven. Woo, period. So you don't have to bargain anymore. Um, and it shows uh, um, how through Jesus' innocent, because he was innocent, suffering and death, because God gave up God's only son, um, it shows that God loves all of humanity, both the powerful and, like these people, both, uh, those who are... Uh, living in, in marginal um, types of living. Um, uh, so there's no more sacrifice of all these things. Uh, um, so whatever you thought you needed to do or say or act or give or sacrifice, like in Lent, we give something up, okay? Whatever you thought you had to do in order to gain God's love it's already there. God could have not done any more than to give up his only son and then that son to give up his life for us. And as scripture says, um, who would give up um, their own life for an unrighteous person? But that's how it worked. Okay. But, maybe not but, now um, you have a new life. You have a life in the spirit. And it, it says that again in um, uh, verse 18. Um, in order to bring you to God, he was put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit. And we share in that same spirit. So, um, why does God do that? Um, why does God sacrifice his only son? Why, why does Jesus give up his life? Well, it's so that God can save us. Um, and it's not only to save us, um, but it's to save us from a formula thinking that we can do it ourselves. Because if we could do it ourselves, then we would, and we wouldn't have to have a Savior, okay? We wouldn't have, ha have to have Christ. So um, Peter talks about this, and he brings up a sore subject, which is Noah. And it's a sore subject because God was really pissed. Can I say that? God was really mad at the people um, after uh, Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel and their descendants because they were terrible people. They turned into selfish. Um, they were killing each other. They were doing all sorts of stuff. And that wasn't God's intent for people. And so God was mad and God got so mad he said, I'm just going to wipe everybody out. But he had one exception. He said, well, we'll give Noah and his family a break. And so he told Noah about it. He said, build a boat because I'm sending a flood to wipe everybody out. And so Noah did. And you know how the story goes. So then God promised, I'm never going to do that again. I apologize. That's not the way to handle sin. Pfft. So we have the rainbow, right, as a promise of that. And uh, so Peter brings that up saying, it's not like that. Um, God decided not to do that kind of whatever you call that, justice or whatever again. Um God will not do it, um, but that God is going to do something that's uh, unbelievable, and that is that 
the innocent, the God, uh, the Son is going to die even for those ungodly people who kill and do all sorts of terrible things. Jesus loved God so much that he was willing to be faithful unto death um, and to love the loser, the sinner, the unclean, the ungodly, to love them enough to die for them. And that's the story that um, the God of all space, time, and dimension uh, has died for you and for me and all humanity, even in all of our goofy, unclean, terrible things that we do and have done. Well, that's not fair. That's not just, is it? No, it's not. It's called mercy. It's called grace. Um, so then the question is, um, what do we do about that? What do we do with that? Um, this this grace that we cannot, uh, cannot earn. Well, um, in Christ's crucifixion, we see the grace of God. We see how God can do things that we can't. We see how God can love like we can't. We see how God is so much better than, than we are. Um, if we think we're, well, we can do it ourselves, blah, blah, blah. But in the crucifixion, you see, holy, wow, that there's a God that loves humanity so much, even in our evilness, that he's willing to sacrifice the innocent in a crucifixion um, to save us. So, you know, Jesus was uh, treated then like an ungodly person. Um, he was treated that way by the ungodly, evil, uh, Roman criminal, sinner, loser people who condemned him to death for nothing that he did. Um, and they did that in his flesh. Okay, because again, uh, in our passage here, it talks about how, um, let's see, where is it here? Okay, um, he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who were former times obey, da da da, and saved, da 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 da, da um, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and in the flesh. So, they killed Jesus in the flesh, but of course there's more to him uh, than just um, the flesh. So therefore Christ's once and for all death, the event, covers all our arskies in the spirit as well. Meaning that we still have to endure the suffering and the, 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 the stuff that's in this world that Holy man, there's just been a lot of bad things that have been happening lately. And um, so it's not that we're um, uh, taken away from all the kind of crappy stuff that goes on and the evil things and the suffering that goes on in this world. Um, but like Jesus, um, he died to the flesh and came alive with the spirit. Um to bring, and this is all, all for the purpose to bring both you and I into the spirit, um, and even even as we live in the flesh. Now ponder that for a while. Death, sun, cross. It's hard to logically explain. I mean, you can figure it out, but it's like, well, what is this all about? Well, it, it shows you when you look at the cross how there is a God because nobody else would do that. And how great that God is to sacrifice his son and himself in relational terms. Um, so if you find that kind of difficult, just ponder that for a while. Um, the logic is kind of tough. Um, but as a whole, we are sinners. And God saved us. And God did it through the son of Jesus. Okay. Um, now, Instead of uh, um, being um, drowned like uh, the people of Noah's day uh, were, um, now Peter talks about how the water is now the water of baptism. 
he says it's not just, he's just making a point, it's not just for cleaning, uh, cleaning the dirt off for us in verse 21. He says, and baptism, which baptism through water now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for your good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the water now is, again, it's a symbol of death because it killed all those people. Um, and so now um, we don't, we're not going to die like that kind of a death. But in baptism, we do kind of die to our sin, to our old ways. Uh, and it's an act uh, of God. Now, a lot of people, you know, they, they I don't want to argue about infant baptism. I'll just tell you that um, if God does all the work, um, when you're an infant, there's really nothing you can do. So it is all God. So it's a good, um, good reminder that when we um, baptize kids, um, because it's all God's work. Um, we're saved by grace. So in baptism, uh, our sin is drowned with Christ's spirit. And as we grow, that um, spirit of life um, comes into our mind, our soul, our heart, our spirit um, to give us new life. And as Peter says, new life in Christ. Okay. Um, so as, uh, as I begun today, I was telling you about how um, Peter began by telling us um, about how God loves the um, unlovable, the people on the margins, um, those people that he's writing to, these suffering um, refugees. He tells them that they are chosen people, that they are loved uh, by God as well. And even though they have no power, even though they don't have any homes, even though they don't have any influence, even though they don't have any authority, even though they don't have anything, all these things that the world somehow um, values, they do have a purpose. And God is giving them a purpose. And here's how that purpose works. Because now that they belong to God, and because God has loved them, uh, accepted them, forgiven them unconditionally, now they are to act differently. They are to act as Christ did. Now, there, now, you, now you can't just totally um, give up your life for everybody else because then you die, right? You, you couldn't eat because when you're eating, you're taking food from other people, blah, blah, blah. But to be different in the world, and Jesus calls that a, a, a new kingdom, a new realm, a new dimension, however you want to call that. Um, and that these people are to try to live um, as God did and show graciousness, show the life-giving power of God. Sorry about that. Um, and forgive in the spirit. He says, you are an accepted, forgiven, and loved child of mine, not because of your faithfulness, not because of your unfaithfulness, not because of your godliness, not because of your ungodliness, um, not because you're thrifty, clean, reverent, and brave, or whatever the Boy Scout thing is, um, but it's because this is who God is. This is how God loves. Uh, this is how God loves humanity, um, even in our knuckleheadedness. So both the righteous and the righteous are loved. So, therefore, when we confess our sin, it's not, again, to bargain with God. I'm going to do this so you can accept and forgive, accept, forgive, and love me. But it's to remember that we are people living in the flesh. And because of that, we cannot free ourselves from the, the sin that we do. But that in Christ, that in God, we also live in the Spirit of Christ. Um, I think it was Lakota, they have a saying where um, there are two wolves. One's evil, one's good. Which one are you going to feed, the good one or the bad one? That's a good way to explain that. Uh, Martin Luther said that Satan and Christ ride the same horse. One has one rein and the other has the other rein. Which one's pulling you this way or the other? So we live in this sort of paradox. Um, but, again, um, Peter is saying that it's by the grace of God that we're saved. It's God's action and activity. And thanks be to God for loving um, us no, no matter where we are on that sort of sin chart that we made up. Okay.
Um, yeah, so that's it. <sighs> now today, um, there, there've been a lot of death around where, where we live here. Um, and so we're <sighs> just a lot of bad stuff going on. Um, so we're going to pray for Akaya and uh, her family, uh, death of her husband. We're going to um, pray for Matt, who a lot of you know from Devil's Lake, who is still in the coma, I haven't heard yet today. Um, we're going to give uh, prayers of thankfulness for um, my friend John, who um, was in surgery just today. I just got word, not even an hour ago, um, that it went well. He had two arteries blocked, 90% and 60%. The artery that they call the wit widow maker, I think is what they call it. So we want to thank God for that. Um, also, there was a, a young man killed in an auto accident here this last week. Um, his name's Isaiah. We want to pray for his family. And again, uh, pray for us that are stuck in this COVID and are just about going nuts like I am. Um, and to pray for a lot of mental health and depression because that has... Um, increased and 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 gotten way harder um, uh, during this COVID, this isolation, which is terrible uh, for your mental health. Um, <sighs> okay, we'll pray those things, and then I'll give you a little announcement. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we pray for all those who are enduring the cost of living in this world. We give thanks to you for all the goodness that you bring us, the life and breath you give us every day that we take for granted. But we pray especially for those who are going through um, a healing of their uh, mental and emotional state. We ask that you'd be with them as they continue to struggle, struggle in this difficult time during COVID. We uh, especially pray for the family of Isaiah upon his death. We pray for Kaya and her family. Upon her husband Taz's death. We uh, continue to pray for Matt as he is in an uncertain state. Lord, we ask for your healing hand upon him and help uh, his family as they go through this difficult time. We also pray prayers of thanksgiving for our friend John that uh, he was able to go to his annual physical and they found the issue with his heart and now is doing well. Um, we thank you for that, Lord. And for all our personal prayers that we have, all the people that are in our heart, um, and including ourselves that we pray for, let us remember that we're not bargaining with you, but we're offering up our prayers so that you may hear our cry. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Okay, that's my little podcast for today. If you're tuning in live, aren't the snowflakes cool? Uh, if you're uh, watching this later, um, tomorrow, which is Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, uh, over at Christ the King, under the awning, the pergola, the overhang, we will have uh, me and other staff members out there to give you uh, the imposition of ashes and to say, to remember, um, it's from dust which you came and it's dust that you will return. We'll be doing it with a clean... Um, can I say Q-tip? Or is that an infringement on copyright? Anyway, uh, on your forehead, um, we will have our first of uh, our Wednesday services broadcast to you at noon. And then, oh, and you can get the imposition of ashes at noon and or 7 o'clock. And then we're doing something interesting. We, we have a Wednesday night uh, service, contemporary service. And because it's Ash Wednesday... And because me and some other people grew up in the 70s listening to rock and roll, um, we're going to be doing a song by Kansas that remembers, that reminds us that we are dust. Can you guess what it is? Dust in the wind. So um, please join us for that tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Otherwise, I'll see you next week uh, right here, 3 o'clock from Moorhead, Minnesota, 56560 um, for Tuesdays with Pastor Jamie.